Hello, welcome to our today's presentation. Today we are going to talk about how Arctis Hub delivers a scalable geospatial platform on Kubernetes. In today's presentation, we are going to have a brief introduction on Arctis Hub and to its core features, and we will talk about the hub backend architectures, uh, the basic components of our backend, and the challenge we are facing when building and running this backend. At the next section, my colleague Aaron is going to talk about uh, the Kubernetes, what is it, why we chose it, and the lesson we learned when we uh, use it in our backend system. And in the final section, we're going to talk about some of the points, we, uh, some of the features that we want to implement in our future plan. So, what's Hub? Hub is an ArcGIS product, and it is an easy to configure cloud platform that organizes people, data, to, to accomplish initiatives and goals. So many, many organizations use Hub to publish the open data to uh, release the data-driven analysis and report to communicate with the event participant and their systems to accomplish the uh, the city-related initiative. Of many features of the hubs, search is a core features, particularly for the uh, the users who use hub as a data portal. The search features allow the user to search content in any hub site and initiative. In fact, it is the second most the view features and page in hub. And since people want to find out the valuable information in an initiative or a hub site, uh, this search feature is supported by uh, the hub backend API called search. And then another core feature of hub is the content view page. It allows the users to view uh, the content of, uh, in any hub uh, in this page. We provide a map to views of the content. We provide uh, the attribute table for our content. We have provide um, the downloadable file in uh, many useful format. And we also provide it in dataset search that allow the users to search uh, the values and field inside one dataset. All this feature is also supported by the Hub Dataset API. So we try to build our core feature based on our Hub backend system. And as a result, we expect our system to be more reliable, scalable, and maintainable. In the following slides, we are going to talk about uh, a few essential components in our backend system and we're going to talk about the challenge we have for uh, this component. In the very sense, the hub includes four basic components. First, we have the job system that periodically executes jobs to fetch new or updated content metadata from the data source like the actions online or the or the hosted feature service from uh, our client. The job system is going to fetch the metadata, a uh, process, and enrich this metadata for to make it more searchable and inject them into our search index. And then our API is going to uh, search and get uh, the the corner metadata from our search index and return the results to the users. Our API servers include a couple of the API. For example, we have the search API that search it in the index, the dataset API that uh, get a specific uh, dataset from the, index, from the index. We also have the site rendering API that uh, renders the uh, and the hub site page uh, on the servers and return uh, the HTML to, uh, to, the, uh, to the client. 
So when we build this API, we observed uh, a few of change. There's uh, different, each API may have different traffic patterns. And even for one API, the traffic volume may be very dynamic at different times. For example, we observed a, a more stable traffic for the site rendering API because it uh, the page view of the hub uh, is quite regular and recurrent. But for the dataset and the search API, um, the usage may increase at uh, a specific time point because uh, um, a dataset may become uh, may attract public attention because of any uh, social event or the promotion from uh, the client. So when we build this API, we want it to be uh, scalable. We want it to be scaled up and down based on the, the traffic. And then for the job system, it is the system to scale and execute data processing jobs. We have many types of jobs. Jobs include the to the jobs to get the updated content from the data source, the jobs to produce the enrichment for the content metadata. This enrichment uh, could be as simple as uh, calculating the spatial extent for uh, jobs, calculating the statistic for the field data, or just count the total numbers of the record count, the record in a table. But some job could be really heavy, like generating the downloadable file for a different format and generating the map data uh, in the vector tile formats, which could be uh, huge. So we see the challenge over here. Some jobs are super light and some jobs are super heavy. We don't want to um, mix uh, these two types of jobs in the execution pipeline, seeing that the heavier jobs may take a longer time to, to finish and its execution is going to block the, the lightweight jobs. We want each job to be executed as quick as possible so that the result can be added into the search index uh, early. Second, the job may fail because of a known error. This error may uh, come from uh, our code bug. This error may come from uh, uh, a problematic uh, data from our data source. So when an error happens, a job failed, it may crash the program that run the jobs. So when the program, we want to minimize this, uh, this the impact of this situation and let the failure to be recovered by itself and the impact should not uh, widespread and affect uh, other components of, of the system. And then we also observed a, a dynamic load for the job system because the load of our job system depends on the update frequency uh, of our data source. Um, and we want it to the system, the job system, to scale uh, up and down based on the actual load and save our computing resource. For our search index, we use the hostess Elasticsearch to, uh, to host all the hub size content. So every new content is added into the index, and the user's deleted content is labeled with just a delete tag so that. Uh, we can recover quickly from uh, any user mistake or uh, maintainer mistake. But we also observe the, uh, the interrupted content to be added into our search index uh, because of bugs or uh, the problematic data input from the data source. So we believe, so the challenge of, for the search index is that it must be uh, maintained regularly. Uh, it must we you need to have a uh, regular validation to filter away the problematic uh, content. We need to regularly we need to regularly delete uh, 
the corner that users has confirmed to delete. In order to support our a big uh, user base and a large volume of dataset, we create a cluster of applications to uh, run the whole system. It includes many different types of the uh, system instance it, that uh, run on the AWS. So it brings the challenge first as a uh, production clusters is complex. It includes more than a hundred application instances. When we build this application instance, we tend to develop smaller applications that best fit into its use case and best use our computing resource. Each application instance has uh, quite different use patterns and uh, management policy. So particularly, we want each application to scale independently up and down to save to best use our computing resource and then we also want it to prepare for the application failure often and sometimes this failure is could be often and we want to better handle it at the end since we have a rel relatively smaller uh, engineering team we want to minimize our cluster maintenance work and use our automated tool as much as possible. With this challenge, we start to look into uh, Kubernetes and, and that is how our journey starts. Hi, my name is Aaron Pelman Isaacs. My colleague, El Young Yu, has talked to you about ArcGIS Hub and our backend architecture. I'm going to talk about Kubernetes and how we use it to make our backend architecture work for you. So what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is a deployment and management system for containerized workloads and automated tooling. What does that mean? It means that if you have an application or set of applications in a container system like Docker, that this provides a framework for deploying and orchestrating those containers, along with any associated tooling, cron jobs, routing rules, monitoring, et cetera. In short, it helps you manage containers and run them at scale. Kubernetes utilizes a declarative configuration similar in concept to other popular management tools like Puppet, Chef, and Terraform, the last two of which we also make heavy use of at Hub. Kubernetes allows for the easy integration of automated monitoring and alerting, and between a strong developer network and a large ecosystem of plugins, there's a great deal of support to be found. We've been using Kubernetes in production for about three years here at Hub. Let's talk briefly about some vocabulary we're going to use later on. I'm not gonna go over all of Kubernetes concepts, that would be difficult in the time we have, but I do wanna make sure that everyone watching this understands some terminology they may encounter later on. So let's talk about nodes. Nodes are machines that the rest of the orchestration is built on top of. They can be virtual or real. In Hub's case right now, they're EC2 instances on AWS, so virtual machines. Pods are containers or bundled containers that you're deploying together. These are tied together similar to anything you would tie to a single host in a more traditional orchestrated system. Replica sets are the next level up. They provide the template for pods to be deployed, how many should be deployed, and maintaining the desired number. Basically, they're typically used to make sure you have redundancy and availability. Deployments provide the orchestration for the replica sets and pods. They allow you to define the resources and requirements for the replica sets and pods, and then they maintain that state. Daemon sets, lastly, are typically used to make sure that certain pods are distributed carefully on various nodes. Often this is to ensure monitoring or alerting infrastructure is well distributed or properly distributed. In Hub's case, a good example would be a Prometheus monitoring agent. Let's also talk about ingresses. Ingresses are near and dear to me. I spend a lot of time writing Nginx rules. Ingresses route traffic. In this handy illustration from the Linux Foundation, you have a good picture of what that means. All the fish come into one place, but they're routed to different places after. 
these places are the various service definitions that send traffic to the pods. Now that we've got some basic terminology out of the way, let's talk about how we actually use Kubernetes for our applications. On the back end, on ArcGIS Hub, we have true continuous integration and continuous deployment, or CI-CD. On a merge of a pull request to the master branch of any of our applications on the back end, a chain of events is automatically kicked off in our build system, Jenkins, that, assuming all the tests pass, results in a deployment to production. Kubernetes facilitates this by making it easy to roll out these applications. As you can see here, we do an initial build and unit test on Jenkins, followed by a container build. The containers are a deployable artifact. Here's where Kubernetes comes in. The containers are pushed out as a rolling update to their respective deployments in our QA cluster. We then run end-to-end -end tests against that deployment and, assuming they pass, we then do the same rolling update to production. If any link in that chain fails, we roll back seamlessly. Kubernetes allows us to quickly and easily, and yet still carefully, make rapid updates automatically and deliver our code to production to our customers in a reliable manner. So how does Kubernetes handle checking if we have healthy containers once we've pushed them out? The answer, of course, is health checks. Find how you want your container's readiness and health to be checked. And, let you, and you let Kubernetes manage the pod lifecycle. Pods that fail checks will be recreated by the orchestration Kubernetes provides. So what benefits have we seen in using Kubernetes? The Kubernetes dashboard allows a quick way to look at health and status of our system. This is particularly helpful for developers with little experience in operations, giving them greater visibility into how their applications are deployed and how they are faring. Integration of cron jobs into Kubernetes allows us to easily bundle together necessary repeated jobs with application deployment, again, facilitating developer access to operational tools. Our applications deployed in Kubernetes are typically stateless. Any data needed long-term is stored elsewhere, such as databases outside the cluster. This allows us to let Kubernetes manage pod life cycles without worrying about data, and we can even replace the entire cluster if necessary. Our typical Kubernetes deployment has simplified our log management. We can also easily wire our alerting and monitoring to the outside tools we already use, like PagerDuty, which is also wired to older legacy infrastructure we run. Command line management is easy. We found that the backend developers pick up how to use kubectl or kubectl easily. Generally speaking, it shifts infrastructure management lower on the stack, aiding developers in their work. We've talked about the dashboard. What you're seeing on the side of this slide is one view of some of our deployments. You can see at a glance the health of the deployments, how long it's been since we created the deployment. Different from pods, bear in mind, these applications are updated many times a day. Deployment is not necessarily rebuilt every time. How many pods are currently running, etc. The ease of management with the dashboard comes with using Kubernetes and again, allows manual management if necessary with ease and facilitates developers in having insight into how their applications are deployed and running. We've also mentioned cron jobs. You can see an example of two displayed here. Exposing the ability to easily schedule crons is helpful, continuing the trend of making things accessible to developers. Because our applications are typically stateless, we can easily start and stop components or replace whole deployments with ease. Failover when health checks or other tests fail is similarly easy. Logging and maintenance. Kubernetes gives us a lot of help in maintaining the cluster's health state. In Kubernetes, our logging infrastructure is deployed with and in the cluster, giving easy access to the logs when diagnosing problems and bugs. For developers, accessing the logs from their applications without any outside components makes things particularly easy. And we can stream the logs from the cluster elsewhere for long-term storage. We also get a learning monitoring, fully configurable. We use Prometheus as a monitoring system integrated into the cluster, and then we integrate it in turn with both our monitoring and alerting pathways outside the cluster, such as AWS CloudWatch, and with our outside alerting solutions such as PagerDuty. We've heavily instrumented the clusters with alerts, and when one fires, it is routed to PagerDuty, and then to one of us on the on-call rotation. As you can see here, my PagerDuty dashboard 
is clear. I have no alerts right now, and Prometheus is showing our API is green. So we've been running Kubernetes in production in Hub for three years. What lessons have we learned? Well, first of all, life is easier with Kubernetes as an orchestration and management layer. But three major lessons come to mind. First of all, alerting and scaling rules are your friends. Those are both hard to get right, and you need to test, test, and continue to test to get them right. The last one is logging is your friend, especially as you look to build out those alerting and scaling rules. So what's next for Hub and Kubernetes? We're looking to move to a cloud-hosted Kubernetes solution like AWS EKS from our older cluster builds, further abstracting some of the management away. We're a small team, and the easier the management, the better. Splitting traffic between multiple clusters is something we do not have the ability to do right now. We can do a blue-green deployment and swap between clusters and swap back but we don't have the ability to run multiple clusters within an environment at the same time and split traffic between them. We're also looking to move to multi-region support, having clusters running in multiple places and the ability to both split traffic between them and fail over as needed. And we are hoping that both of those last two will be facilitated by cloud hosting option. I hope everyone who's watching this has found this informative and helpful. And I thank you for your time, and I invite you to check out ArcGIS Hub and what we're doing.